What's up guys, welcome back to the Convenient Car Channel where shit is just not convenient at all. It's been eons since we've made a video for this channel. A lot of things have changed and uh, I guess we'll just get right into it. So, today we're gonna be doing an a, a supercharger kit install on Jacob's Z06 Corvette. So basically, this is gonna be an SI trim Vortec charger on this car. Uh, 8 PSI, it's basically their stock, like off the shelf kit with the base of, you know, every option, essentially. But um, we're gonna be doing twin pumps, twin disc clutch, and get this car set up for flex fuel as well. That way, in the future, if we decide to change anything up on the car, we can do that pretty easily. So as I said, a lot of stuff changed since the last time I posted on this channel. It's been several years. I got my own house here now. Can't really see all of it, but got a two car garage here. Um, living with a couple of my roommates. I'll do a little run through of all the cars that we have. You recognize this one right here, if you've watched the channel before. It's pulled apart right now. We're gonna get into the in depth on this later, but a lot of things have changed on this car and a lot of things are gonna be pretty crazy when it goes back together. But that's kinda pushed aside for the moment. We're gonna focus on the C5 Corvette and uh, show you some of the other cars that we got. So, quick run through. This is Kyle's C5 Z06. This is a 2001 silver car. Uh, Jacob's is an 02. It's black. Pretty much twinning. We got these cars around the same time. Jacob got his first, and then Kyle drove it and was like, I have to have one of those. So he ended up getting this. Um, you guys will see Tyler soon. If you've watched the channel before, you'll probably remember him with Patsy when we did the, the B4 Passat build. This is his daily driver. So this is Mark 6 GLI. Pretty much stock on some AMG wheels. Looks super good. Total solid daily driver car. Now this one. This is my 2003 Lightning Yellow Evo 8. Um, I've had this car for probably two years now. There's a lot that's been done to it. A huge, huge story behind this car. And uh, I'm probably going to do it in a completely separate video. But I'll do a full rundown of everything that we've done to this car. Because I did buy it stock. And now it's a little more modified than it was before. But um, yeah, I'm going to do a whole entire video on this. And uh, it's, it's pretty crazy, the story behind this car and the actual previous Evo that I owned, which you guys have never seen. So, gotta get this hood off. Hood's all off now, ready to get started on this install kit, man. This is the LS6, comes stock in the, uh, the Z06. Makes around what, like 405 Craig stock? So, with everything together on this car, with the long tube headers and Definitely on ethanol. It should make hopefully around 600 horsepower, which is going to be pretty fucking scary in this thing, dude. 600 wagon wheel horsepower. Yeah, buddy. So this is actually going to be our first rodeo ever with a Corvette. I know pretty much nothing about these cars. It's going to be a huge learning experience because I do want to get one of these in the future for myself, but probably not anytime soon. Weird, dude. All fucking, all these 90s, early 2000s small block Chevys got like snorkel fucking air intakes and shit. I know so, the whole the whole layout's just totally different. The cooler's than, gonna be going at an angle because the car's so low. So it's gonna be cool, man. We'll see. A lot different than what I'm used to working on. I've have done LS stuff before, but on trucks, not in a Corvette. We'll see what the uh, the differences are here. So if you guys have seen any of my old videos, you might have seen this car as my daily driver like five, six, seven years ago. This thing used to be stock. Now it's stripped apart. But Tyler owns this now. He ended up buying it from me. And uh, everything's been refreshed, like all new bushings. He's got a new steering rack on the way. He's got some Willwoods for the front. Everything's refreshed. Even the rear beam bushings are refreshed. It's got my old Corrado seats on the inside with a harness bar. B3 steering rack. It's an 86 car, so it's CE1. We're going to be swapping it over to CE2, and this is also going to be getting a VR6. So this is going to be like the re the re-rendition or whatever of the B4. So this is gonna be pretty crazy when it's done because it's gonna be super solid. I don't know. Where's your gloves, bud? You ready to be super fast? <laughs> Can't sell this one though. Oh man. No part out, no part out. We'll see if you can put back together. If you can put back together, we're in uncharted territory. <laughs> Yeah, when the bank repos this one, I'll be in the impound lot stealing the parts back off of it. <laughs> Let's see what's going on on the indoors. Oh fuck, look who it is, oh, bud. Oh my goodness. Phone for the channel again, dude. Oh hell yeah. It's been 
like seven years or something, man. Yeah. Your face has not been shown on this channel in eons, bro. Dude, long, long time. It's crazy. So oh, this this is our house, man. This is we got like the bar and the pool table and stuff. It's I mean it's it's the whole pad, dude. It's sick. The whole fucking bachelor pad. I mean we've we've grown up so much in the last dude, like I said, seven years or something. We got had so much life shit going on, but we're back. We're gonna start making videos. I, I already showed them little bits of the of the Mark II, the Mark II and everything. Nice. Basically yep. telling them that it's like Patsy V2 in a way, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. Man, what comes around goes around. Just Got bigger lot. and better. Yeah, well, dude. Kinda, not bigger, kind of smaller. But. Smaller, but gonna be way faster, way, way more put faster. together. Not all sketchy like it was before with all the eBay stuff. But um, man, I'm just so excited to start filming again. It's been so long. And we just have so many projects to start on. I have so much shit to show you guys between the Evo and what we got going on with the Vets and the Mark II. I mean, just a lot of room for content now. So hopefully, we can get a lot of shit rolling. Mario and Luigi. I don't think any shit. What? We got Mario and Luigi here. <laughs> With their fucking orange gloves, dude. We got matching pants. Down in there. When you hire these guys to work on your car, they show up to your house looking like this. <laughs> So the boys got their shirts back on, so you know it's getting real serious now. So I think we're gonna hold off on the charger install for just a few minutes. I think we're gonna get the headers knocked out first. Doing it. Headers first. Wire. <laughs> oh! Dude! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need to fucking shear it off, Mike! I wonder if I got it. It's all good. Yeah, I think we're gonna get the header started first. That way we maximize the amount of room that we have to make sure we can get these in and out. As Kyle's just trying to plug wires. It's okay, we got new ones, not a big deal. <laughs> so everyone left to go grab some tools that we need. We need like fuel line quick disconnects and a couple other things like some uh, long pliers to get the rest of these plug wires out. So they're kind of a pain to get to back here. But um, in process of taking all these harness plugs out to get them put to the side. That way we can get this intake manifold pulled and get all of the air pump stuff removed because the new long tube headers that are going on this car do not have ports for the air pump. So we're gonna delete that in a hole completely. So get rid of all the air pump stuff. I think there's a pump down in the driver's side wheel well area down there or something. I don't know if we're gonna keep it there and just disable it or if we're gonna remove it completely, but that needs to be done. So the syntax gotta come off and uh, get everything sorted and then we'll start on the headers. So we got Kittrick here. We're doing a little double vlog, I guess. <laughs> it's like Inception. Who's, who's gonna get more views, you or me? Well, who's got the faster car? Uh, you. Uh, a and a centrifugal charger. Sweet. Yes, sir. That looks sick, dude. 3.8, <laughs> oh! just the standard one, so. We make about 550 or so on the pump. On pump, yeah, yeah. boy. More on E. Hell yeah. 600 on E. 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 Yeah, we're just waiting for uh, a couple tools. We need to get. Kyle's going to pick up some fuel disconnect lines for the uh, the feed line, of course. And then I'm going to pull the intake off, get all of the air stuff out of the way, and then we continue on. We got Alex and my brother too. You guys haven't seen this guy in eons. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I think they're in the house. Mm -hmm. he, ain't got the, he ain't got the prelude no more, though. Fuck no. What's she whipping now? Oh, What's she whipping now? It's, it's out there. It's out there. It's what is it? A little Aprilia. It's a little Aprilia RSV Millie. Yeah, he's a, he's a bike boy now. That's all he drives is bikes. I'm gonna walk all you one day. <laughs> I'm gonna walk all you. Yeah, right. Ah! Come on, bro. Step, bro. Let's fucking unhook it. How do you feel about this, man? Jacob, let's go! Oh, touch your step there, camera guy! Jesus! <laughs> Jesus Christ! What are you trying to do right now? Yeah, you're the stinker. Kyle, I know how to do you. I know you ripped a stinker. It's probably your you upper lip, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not get it out yet? If it stinks, it came from Kyle. Alright, so we're trying to get this manifold off right now. We got one more uh, coolant hose that looks like to have, the body. It's the line. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a vapor tuber. I figured, no, it's a steam, it's a steam crossover port. No, it's steam port. It's something. <laughs> it's a part. It's a part. All right. <laughs> ah! Yeah! 
what you t what you tugging on right now? Dude, I'm trying to use my fingers as to get these uh these these worm clamps or whatever they call them, these hose clamps off, but it hurts my fingers. Oh, baby! <laughs> oh no! I have a feeling the install on this car may not to go to, to go. The install on this car may not go together correctly. We've had a couple twisteds, and I got war paint. Need the knock sensor bracket off. Oh, we're just a keel. Stop, bro! You're puking, Keely boy. All right, Keely boy. Bro, I got this right here. Did you flip and remove it, man? So we got the intake manifold off currently. Um, we're gonna get the air pump shit out of the way, this which runs around the back side, comes around here, air pumps over there, line comes up. There's a 15 mil on the back side of the head that we need to unbolt, pull the air lines out of the way. Is it a 15 mil for real though? It's probably a 15 mil. So we'll get that out of the way. Uh, when this car gets tuned on HP tuners, you can disable the air pump and the ECU, so we don't gotta worry about that. We'll probably just leave it in place. Kit's actually going to get the quick jacks, which I didn't show you who he was, I don't think. No, yeah, I did. <laughs> hey, it's a little, little side note here. Once this is being done, we got the Evo, we got the STI, and we got the motherfucking vet. So anybody that's in the Lacey, Tomwater, or Olympia greater area oh who feels free to lose money, please bang the community car channel's comments. B Raw's Instagram. We'll take some money. We gotta recoup for the funds. What about the 240? We ain't there yet. <laughs> Soon. We ain't there quite yet. What, what I was saying though is whoever wants to see Model T Turbo Hound, whoever wants to lose some money, <laughs> tap in. That's what I'm saying. Tap in. That much power. The rear end can't hold that much. My rear end can't hold you that much. You said power. it was gonna be around 600. Might as well just go 666. It's gonna hit 666. I'm just gonna start fucking. Diablo that bitch. Put some flames Stop. like my bike out there. Bro. It's gonna hit me hey, listen, straight in the mouth. Back. I'm gonna you drink it. Much yeah, drink it. I'm gonna walk your shit. I'm gonna walk your shit. With what? Your your 1000cc 1962 fucking. <laughs> Don't make me buy this, wow. Thrusa. Don't make don't me make, buy this. Don't make, don't me, make me buy this. Don't make, don't me, buy make this. me buy this. You're talking about your shit slow right there. Don't make me buy I'm this. Don't hey, make Kyle, me buy this, Medusa. Get the hit you. Let's run into you. That's it. Hey, dog. My bike has flames and skulls on it for a reason. Yeah. All right, we are back. It is day two of working on the C5 Z06 Corvette supercharger install. If I can close my sliding glass door. Um, don't remember where we left off yesterday. We were a bit boozed up, but we're back at it today. Oh, it's been a fiasco. We realized that uh, it was Jeg's box that the uh, harmonic balancer, they, the super damper, was supposed to come in wasn't in the box. We noticed it was retaped, so it must have got stolen in delivery or in between delivery. Yeah. So that's gonna get that's gonna get one day shipped over now. Um, we're in process of getting the torque tube pulled out. Rear end has dropped. This thing is an absolute pain in the ass. What do you even mean to deal with? It's fun. It just doesn't look like fun. Oh, it's fun. The, the cameras missed a lot of good stuff. Yeah. So if you can see, oh rear subframe is now not attached to the body. And we got it down low. Um, torque tube is also separated up here. It's almost out all the way. Uh, you can see the clutch because the inspection cover's off. We just need to make a little bit a little bit of room to pull this a little bit further back and then, then she comes out. So we're getting close. Getting ready for the clutch install for the new... Uh, Center force twin disc that we have for this thing. Um, like I said, I don't remember where we got yesterday, but headers are out. And uh, we're making slow progress, but we're making progress. I still need, uh, I'm saying, bro, I still need like. <laughs> the tip of the thing is still in the pressure plate. <laughs> It's just a tip that's in. Like Seriously, bro. On this one we have to, we have to figure out if we can remove that, the the bell housing. It doesn't. 
still got this much more to go. Yeah, so it looks like we need, uh, we need to lower it more. We need to clear this hard line in the rear. So I think what we're fighting right now is the brake line, the hard lines for the rear brakes are getting stuck on the diff. So we're gonna take off uh, the mounting bracket where it meets the line to the caliper and see if we can move it back a little bit further to clear enough room to get this rear subframe pushed back far enough to clear the rest of the uh, torque tube. So I'm just gonna go get a bunch of empty toilet paper rolls and make that my new torque tube. <laughs> <laughs> this one's broken. Well, some time has gone by. The rear end is really close to the ground. Diff is pretty much smushed against the, the trunk. They're speaking languages I don't even understand. Let's see how close we are from the front. Be ready. I'm right here, man. Right here. I can see. No, I'm, I'm, oh, we're out. I'm supposed to hand it to you. Hand what to you, me? Hand this. Look above your head, genius. What? Oh, there's the fucking slave. What's up, guys? It's been a couple days since I made an update clip on the Corvette. We've been kind of pushing, pushing along slowly, as we've had other shit to do as well. But um, we got the uh, clutch job done. Whole rear end is back in the car now. Everything's all bolted up, torque tube, everything back in. Clutch is bled and installed. Working on getting the headers in right now, and the O2s, trying to get all this stuff wrapped up. That way we can start getting the charger stuff installed. But while they're doing that, I'm starting over here on the whole fuel pump system. If you come in the back here, you can see that that's the access hole for the pump. It's really weird on these cars, it's on the side. But uh, there's just a little heat shield that goes in the way right here. Pull that off, pump pretty much just comes right out. Um, we're doing the uh, Racetronics twin pumps on this, which are like this. So instead of one single plug, it's two because, you know, it's a dual pump. Anyways, I had to undo the original pump connector that goes from the hanger to the pump because it has the wiring for the fuel level sender on it. And unfortunately, for the dual pump harness, wherever the connector is, right here, um, it only had two wires on it and that's for both of these pumps. So I'm gonna have to solder the connections together to get the fuel level center to actually work with the little dual pump conversion harness for it. And then I'll plug it into the car and then I'll just turn the key and check and see if the, uh, the uh, fuel level works when I turn this guy right here. So we'll see. All right, yet again, it's another day. Don't mind my hair. It's crazy, I've been working all day. Um, been making some headway on the Corvette. I've been doing this kind of slow, so it's been like a week process, essentially. But Kyle's trying to get the steering rack dropped out of the front currently. Lighting might not be very good, but the rack is in the way of the harmonic balancer on these. So we gotta pull the rack out, get the subframe dropped down a little bit in the front to do so. Um, the reason for that is because the stock Crank pulleys on these cars are prone to like exploding, so we bought a super damper for it, and uh, we gotta get that on before we get the charger stuff installed. But the headers are back in. I think I've said that already, everything's back in. Um, I've been going to town on the fuel system. I can't even remember where I left off last, but coming down here. Uh, so, got the fuel pump in, got the uh, plug and play, a little conversion harness here routed through this hole here that goes alongside the side skirt comes up and uh, over to the battery I got the relays mounted up here so this should all be covered up by the rear fender liner when it goes back in Jacob's currently getting the shifter reinstalled now that we got the clutch install all finished in this car um, yeah I'm trying to get this thing tucked up sorry Kyle and <laughs> and looking nice, so I didn't really show it. I don't wanna get in Kyle's way, but there's an ins inspection hole here, so we came up through the hole, through where the skirts go, and uh, came up through this little passage here, and I went under the booster and master, 
and it's actually coming up behind there and I'm zip tying it the whole harness alongside this cable up here try to get it as clean as possible and then we're gonna get all this attached to the positive and negative of the battery I'm just gonna go from the post and probably this ground that's down here so these are the obviously the power and ground wires these are the uh, 30 amp fuses and I think one of these goes to the hob switch I'm not exactly sure on these two plugs yet I haven't got that far but the hob switch when the intake goes back on will be sitting kind of just like tucked by the fuel rail right here but we're gonna get this car on get it finished and run it on the stock injectors and ECU just so we can make sure all the kinks are worked out we can drive the clutch make sure that the fuel systems working properly and um, yeah just make sure everything works before we get the uh, Chevy Express ECU put in this that way we can get it set up for flex fuel and then I still got to wire the gauges and the flex fuel sensor and stuff up so that's a task for another day but for now we're trying to grind because our time is getting very limited before this thing is getting tuned so second tune date yeah we've been pushed back one time <laughs> we, we missed the first one and already we're like four days past that and like five days away from it man. yeah it's tough yeah it's, it's tough between work to have motivation to oh, yeah. come out here because we pretty much work on cars all day so we're trying to get there it will get done hopefully soon i mean if you're watching this video you've probably only spent a good five minutes watching this entire process so <laughs> but <laughs> but uh yeah i will keep updated um, if we make any further progress. Okay, it's been like a week since I last recorded. It's probably been like a month now, but you've guys seen only probably five minutes of fucking video. Jacob's gone through five different hairdos and nine different facial structures, but it's fine. We have the, the charger on now. It's been, uh, haven't been very proactive on doing this, but we're getting stuff done. Um, got the charger on currently. Got the idler down here in place. Everything's tensioned. We got the bolt out for the tensioner because it's spring loaded. So there's a set pin or set bolt right here. That's all out. The belt feels good. I mean, it's pretty fucking tight. Um, and the instructions, they said to, because it's a slide style idler, you probably can't see in there, but there's a gap here so you can slide the idler into place. You're basically supposed to get it snug and then pull the pin, so that's what we have done. Got it pretty, I mean, as tight as I could get it with my hands on a three inch, ra or three inch ratchet, and then we pulled the pin, so pretty tight. Um, now, as Jacob tapes, takes a sip of this fucking Modelo. Depression. What's, what's the next step? What are we doing now? Um, so, assuming that the belt is straight and aligned and everything, Vernon had a concern that, um... So, there's a ribbed idler pulley yeah. directly under the drive, the upper drive pulley. I can get that um, right. It's an eight rib. So, this setup is a six rib setup, which is a, like a factory bolt-on supercharger six rib belt setup. The upper idler is actually eight rib. But an eight so, rib is also a common, you know, supercharger, uh... uh Pulley size, I guess. Yeah. So, so it, it would make sense if it's just um, maybe something that where they only use that one pulley, I guess, and perhaps I don't know. So, but it, you know, the six goes straight in the middle. There's one on each side that's not being used, one rib. So. Yeah, and it's a line still. So we we just had like a discrepancy of is it is that normal? Like, should that be there? But then just we were fucking find out. Dude, we we I mean we eyeballed it and everything looks super aligned, even though it's eight rib for that idler like he said there there's a open rib on each side and the six ribs go dead center we're just gonna start it and the belt's gonna go fly through the hood. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it looks like it's fine i don't i don't think this yeah. is a problem i think that's how it's supposed to be if you decide to run an eight rib setup yeah. but i was just like uh oh, that so, doesn't that doesn't look right yeah, so, so next step is we're probably gonna have to like vacuum up these metal shavings that are in yeah the body I didn't everywhere. I don't I don't think I showed them last time I didn't think I got footage of it so we had to cut out 
the upper half of this rad right here. Make sure not to get into the cores. But we got the upper half cut out and I might go over this again maybe with a, a file just to get it a little bit nicer. Just and we, we also had to cut out the uh, radiator fan in this section just to clear the uh, intake for the charger itself. And we also had to clear it for the charge pipe that comes down directly in center for the intercooler. Yeah. Don't think I filmed that last time, but uh, we got that cut out. So there's, there's metal shavings everywhere. We should have plugged off the fucking throttle body and stuff, but I'm gonna grab a vacuum, like a wet rag, clean everything off, clean everything out. So nothing's gonna actually get inside of the engine, but we gotta get that cleaned. And then, in the charge piping. yeah, we gotta figure out the intake and charge piping now. Everything, we got the, the horns pulled out of the side, so the horns were here. Fuck that way reduction, bitch. Pretty much. <laughs> so we pulled them out of the passenger side section. The uh, air system, the secondary air system was on this side. I have that ripped out. It's, it's sitting down here, that's pulled out. So we gotta get everything kind of out of the way for all the charge prepping to run through, because in the shroud down here, the, the cover, the plastic covers, we gotta either hole saw or cut some holes in for the charge piping to run through. And then that's pretty much it. Once we get the charge piping set up, the charger is pretty much gonna be done. And yeah, then- we're gonna have to fill the fluid somewhere. It's either this one or that yeah. one. It's a self-contained supercharger, so you just replace its internal fluid like every, I think it's 3,000 miles or so. 1,500 for the first. Uh, the first run. I have two different bottles of this fucking fluid, dude. This shit's like purple flirt from fucking Jimmy Neutron, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I think I have two oil changes worth of that, and what's weird is the instructions for the kit detail a non-self-contained. Yeah, so. it details the V1, V2, and V7 chargers. Yeah, right. This is the V3, so the other chargers are not self-contained systems. They actually run a return and feed line to the charger which this charger is not. This is a self-contained charger. So the instructions have been a little blurry for us trying to figure some stuff out because I think even the brackets are a tiny bit different. Yeah. But we're, we're getting there. Why are you recording me right now? Why are you, why are you chuckling and crackling? Oh, sunglasses. Oh, I'm just like, what came that bright outside? Dude. But uh, we're, we're getting close, man. I mean, it's a matter of getting this charger set up, piping, charge piping, and then I gotta throw the injectors on. It's an LS, so that's gonna take me literally 10 seconds to do. And then we gotta go pick the... Yeah, hopefully Dom will pick up this fucking ECU from <laughs> Auburn. It's up there with the tuner, um, cause it's an 04 Chevy Express ECU, so the tuner needs to put a Corvette file on it. You know, input 80 pound injectors, whatever. Hopefully this thing will be able to like limp up there. I mean, everything I've read and been told by a and A and stuff. As long as you stay out of boost, like there should be it'll no be good. Reason, so yeah, and that's probably somewhere around like twenty three to twenty five hundred RPM starts to build boost. So, so we'll just keep it ni nice and light enough to just get up to speed and dude, stuff like that. This car like so. chills on the fucking freeway at like fourteen hundred RPM. So yeah, dude, it's geared pretty high. Yeah, I mean, so. it it'll do it just fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, other than the charger, just injectors. Slap the new map sensor on. Get some of the gauges wired up, and then get the ECU wired in which is like just a couple pin swaps, super easy. And then this thing will be uh, ready to go. We were just gonna keep it on pump, but the reason we went with the Chevy Express ECU is because we're gonna put this thing on ethanol now just to make sure that the LS6 actually lasts a while. Yeah, because the 04, the 04 Corvette <laughs> ECU has, has um, flex fuel capabilities. Yeah, it just has the correct, you know, flex fuel capabilities. There's no where to input ethanol fuel tables and stuff for these current ECUs. You can't modify them. It's so, O2 on this car. It's, it's O2. O2. So, and the 04, the 04 Corvette ECU. I don't know how much that would have cost or how hard it would have. A lot harder to find, probably. So, yeah, we we went through a few junkyards. Fuck, dude. People love to take those out of trucks. Yeah, everything was scalped. There was nothing so left that we can it. find. I don't even know where I got this one. I think I got it on eBay. eBay. So yeah. it's pretty cheap. Um, but yeah, if all goes to plan, man, I mean, 90% of this shit's done, dude. The struggles we have faced have been like so fucking foul. Yeah, if, if only they saw like all the behind the scenes <laughs> stuff that we've struggled well, with. Just the torque tube, getting that out and in was like, it was like ridiculous. The, the clutch was installed incorrectly by me. The pressure plate, I should say, was installed incorrectly by me because I was trying to bench press the shit up there, the bell housing's in the way, it's a stupid setup. You can't just put the stupid clutch alignment tool in there and... Well, it'd be better if we had a two post. 
Yes, this car not being on a lift, dude, and being on jack stands is like made it a hundred times fucking harder. <laughs> like if we had like a trans jack or something and all kinds yeah, of other dude. shit, dude, this car we were we were operating on fucking three jack stand dude. or three jacks, dude. Yes. yes. <coughs> But Absolutely. we're getting there, so I shall update you guys when we are pretty much done with this thing. And then hopefully we can get some clips, uh, whether I'm going or not. I'm going to try to, but I'll probably send the camera off with Jacob if I can't and get some clips on the dyno, and we'll see this thing when it's done. You're going to see it blow up in four No, don't say that. <laughs> All right, guys. Moment of truth. I skipped a lot of the last bits of filming. But uh, she's done. A couple times first. Make sure that your coolers in, in chargers screen. connected, injectors are in, new map oh, sensors sure in. Listen, first. Or smell first. This is first the moment of the truth, boys. The yeah. so far. She's gonna be loud because she's open header still, but oh, it's yeah. Open -headed, you know? yeah. Is it actually? What, what about the X pipe? Well, the X pipe's on, but it's fucking that does nothing. Let's put the exhaust on. How is he? How is he gonna drive this home? That's what we gotta figure out after. With the fucking muffler? The fucking <laughs> dangling back there. We can zip tie them up or something yeah. in the meantime. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's what it is. You I need some flex pipe. This angle is so bad. So, it's too late to start this thing again. Too late to start this thing again. Might do one, one more crank after they fix this. So we had an issue after getting it all buttoned up, getting this thing started. Went through a lot of uh, diagrams and stuff and, you know, realized that Everything's working as it should, except starter wasn't actually doing anything, so ended up being a lead to the starter that was loose, and that's what we're tightening now. Huh? So. Yeah, it's getting tight now. Should be good, and hopefully you get some tune footage for you guys tomorrow. Yeah, it's good. I guess we're going straight. Um, I'm, I'm out here vlogging for Brandon. Uh, we're going to get uh, Jacob's C Corvette tune and fucking little road trip. Just me and the boy. Yeah, we're headed to Auburn. It's gonna be like 41 minutes. And we're trying to catch up to the tow truck driver because he's like, uh, he's probably, he's probably like seven, eight minutes ahead of us or something. And uh, yeah, the tune's at nine o'clock, so We'll have about 40 minutes to bleed the cooling system and then bleed the the uh, the, the power steering rack. That, that should just bleed itself pretty much. It'll just glug down in there. So, but yeah, man, the fucking the car. I actually moved it for the first time. Definitely didn't really like to. Uh, didn't it didn't want to drive, but it it did. And the AFRs looked good. So yeah, I mean. Everything's how it should be, dude. I mean, yeah. Kenny already flashed the ECU for the 80 pound injectors in there. He had to upload a Corvette file to it because, again, as we mentioned before, it's a Chevy Express ECU. So, um, so yeah, man. Fuck yeah. See you guys later. So we made it. I don't know where we're going. Hey, guys. Is this such? So we made it. Pretty cool. Bunch of cool cars, fucking Evo and shit. But yeah, pretty cool. You made it. Check out this thing. Oh shit. You excited? <laughs> so it turns out that um, Kenny's dino's broken. So there's a shop called Corvettes of Auburn here. I guess we can use their dyno, so it's the perfect place. Yeah, honestly. Place. Still gotta bleed the cooling system and stuff, but I'm gonna just assume that they'll have GM cooling here, like the part of the platform. Yeah. Hell yeah. Alright, so 
I ended up making it out today. Didn't think I was gonna be able to. Shout out to Alex and uh, Jacob for taking over all the camera footage and stuff earlier. But we got the Corvette on the dyno now. Kenny's gonna be tuning this, and uh, I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> you excited? Yeah. Nervous? Yes. <laughs> There's so many things I could cover. She should be all right. Yeah. All right, are we gonna put some number guesses down on what this is gonna make on pump and on E? Any idea? Um, I think on E, I'm gonna say like 610. Okay. And then on pump, Mm, between 540 and 560. Okay. What I do think, you think? I think on pump it's going to make about 500, probably. Maybe like 520. And I think on E it's probably, it's probably going to be like close to 6, but I don't think it'll get there. I think it'll be like 570. I think I'm going to guess like 525 pump, 530 pump ish. And then maybe like 595 on E. That's what I'm guessing. That's if we make it that far, right? That's, <laughs> it. That's if we can run. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the camera just died, but yeah, I don't know what you were saying before. Oh, I was saying that as long as you know, Kenny was saying, like, as long as we can get it to run good on gas, then we'll move on to E. I think it'll make like probably lowish fives on pump, like 520, 510, and then I think on E, it probably would be like 580, something like that. Well, we still have to grab the that's tans. hopeful, hopeful thinking, or that's like you're like. You're putting the bar down a little bit. Dude, hey, 580 is so rip. Right? Yeah, it will. It'd be cool to just say you have 600 horsepower. It's like, it's like running a quarter mile. Time. Well, your, your, your LS3 Camaro made 498. Like, yeah, just facts. literally just facts. a cunt well, hair right. under 500. It's like running a 1099 and then saying you have a 10 second car. Right? It's just like, you know what I mean? But I think, I think more importantly that the car, like the power band's good and everything's, yeah, 100%. You know, that's way more important than just some horsepower number. True. It still matters, obviously. It still matters. I like my new car. Yeah, looks like everything you've ever owned, so. So, we had a slight issue. When I did the uh, wiring for the flex fuel sensor, I had it set up the same way that my Evo is set up to where you have the flex fuel sensor runs to the gauge and then you have an analog wire that comes off the gauge that goes to the ECU. Apparently that doesn't work with this car or the ECU setup. So we had to basically eliminate the gauge and run the signal wire directly from the sensor to the ECU and uh, it's working now. So hopefully here shortly it gets tuned. Excited? So unfortunately, the car didn't get finished. I left off with all the uh, clips that we got with my iPhone at the end of the dyno day. We were, ha mm -hmm. we were having problems with the uh, stock fuel filter because on the Corvettes, the stock filter, filter, the stock fuel filter is a fuel pressure regulator and filter in like one weird unit. Anyways, uh, because of the twin pumps, we were having an issue with the regulator not keeping up it was like pulsating fuel so it uh, just wasn't holding fuel pressure at higher rpms so we ended up ordering an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator that we're gonna put in tomorrow which is this is already like two weeks after the last clip or like a week maybe two weeks maybe like two weeks and I'm um, gonna get that done tomorrow and uh, we'll continue on probably in another video but I'll get more dyno clips of the car, and then we have Northwest Nights coming up on the 3rd of September, and we're gonna be racing the car. So, got a, got a lot of good uh, good footage coming up for you guys, so it's been a long time since I posted. Hopefully I can get some more stuff, more updates going on with the Passat.
can show you around the Evo and all the other cars soon. But right now we've been focused on the C5. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tried to film as much as I could in the time that I had. Tried to focus a lot on getting the car done and not so much on filming, but I tried to get at least updates in while I could. So yeah, catch you in the next one. All right guys, I don't have my camera right now, but I decided to pop out the iPhone. Uh, quick update on the Corvette. We're over at Kittrick's house right now, just to have a little bit more garage space to do this. Um, plumbed in a little fuel pressure gauge up here. We ended up getting rid of the factory fuel filter slash regulator. Can't remember if I told you guys the issue of why the car didn't get finished on the dyno, but it was having some fuel pulsating issues. And I guess the stock style uh, regulators are just junk. So we ditched that. It's probably gonna be a little difficult to see getting in here, but uh, we installed a air motive adjustable fuel pressure regulator. Oh, sorry, yeah. Basically got some dash 6A in fittings and everything to fit it in place of the uh, stock filter slash regulator. And there it is. So we got, uh, we got it all adjusted to 58 PSI base pressure. And hopefully we don't have any more fueling issues on the dyno because pumps are doing good. Everything else is good. It's just that one little problem that we were having that caused us not to get this thing done in that day oh hey guys it's currently eight in the morning august the 18th friday right now i'm so tired i was up till like three something almost four in the morning last night getting the corvette buttoned up because we thought it was done it wasn't had to pull apart the pumps again and basically just run through everything and make sure that we're not losing fuel pressure for any reason because it was dropping about 15 PSI of fuel pressure um, on a good load. So should be good now. I had I pulled it all apart and put it back together and it seems to be good. So we gotta go, like now. All right, so we're back. We got Tim, Jacob, cars currently on the dyno. Let's see what it puts out. Making some jam. Okay. Still keeping it a little, a little safe. Yeah, it probably make this for six if I spice it up a little bit. Um, that's pretty safe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Y'all don't even have no idea how fucking gnarly this car is. Yup! Let's go! <laughs> Okay.
close. Perfect fucking bitch. Nice. Dude, I did that flawless. 